Hi, Stu from Music Technology here. And there's been a couple of comments on my op-amp video recently about getting the circuit to work. Now, I know it can be really frustrating as a beginner building a circuit that is as complex when you're a beginner as this one and then it not working and then having the frustrating task of trying to get it to work. And a lot of people will tell you that that experience is invaluable, but it doesn't really help you in fixing the circuit and making it work. So I thought I'd make this video in some steps you could do to troubleshoot the circuit and make sure you've got the right voltages and everything on the pins to give you the best chance of getting it to work. So firstly, what we want to do is we want to connect all of our grounds. We want to check they're all connected. So if I just use one of my multimeter probes here a second so I can point out, I'll use the positive one, point, point out that I've got the ground rail here on the bottom of my circuit. Now, if I bring this over into the center, and then I might be able to zoom in actually, there we go. It's a bit better. So this is my jack ground. It's connected to the sleeve here of this jack. It's going to my amplifier. And it's coming in on this rail at the bottom here. Now, if you remember from the schematic, we've got this AC ground here of this capacitor going to ground. So that's correct. And then we're jumping that gap at the bottom. We know that we need to connect pin four of the op amp to ground and that's done through this blue wire and it's going to ground and then we've got our voltage divider here with the red red green and that's two two and five zeros or 2.2 meg ohms and there's the other one those are connected together and that one's going to ground and that one's going to the positive power rail as you can see here then I've got my other jack connected it's just out of shot now but you'll see the green wire which is the ground wire from it is going to ground and then this is my battery negative lead. So I've got all my grounds connected together in this circuit. Okay, so check that. If you haven't got your grounds connected together, and I'm just going to turn down my desktop amplifier because this is really loud, you'll get a sound that sounds like this. And that will be enhanced if you touch anything on the circuit. As soon as you plug that in and ground it properly and then it's almost silent now that's on that side and that side's already been amplified if i unplug this one the noise is going to be amplified by 10 decibels so i'm going to turn this down again because it's going to be loud unplug this one and we're getting much more of an issue so if you've got any noise that sounds like that on your circuit, the first place I'd go to always, if I hear that kind of noise, is checking all my grounds are connected. And that's usually from experience what it is when it doesn't work. But let's carry on and assume that we have got all our grounds connected and it's still not working and see what else we can do. So I'll zoom back out a second. Is the op amp not hot? to the touch. I think you can read that just a minute. And I've put be careful here because sometimes we can mistakenly wire the positive supply into pin eight rather than pin seven. I've done it myself, that's how I know. And what that does is it makes the op amp very cross and it gets really hot. And you can actually burn your finger by touching it. So don't just touch it, approach it, you'll feel that it's hot. Ideally, we'd want some kind of thermometer so we can test it without actually touching it. That left for too long can do two things. It obviously fries the op amp so it doesn't work anymore. And secondly, it can melt the breadboard. And unfortunately, I haven't kept the breadboard that I melted when I first started doing electronics, but I have melted a few of these little breadboards in my time. <laughs> so it's an easy mistake to make and one that you find yourself making less and less the more you build these things and the more experience you get. So just check that it's not getting hot. They're the two main things with the circuit. So assuming that's the case, what else can we check? Are the supply voltages correct? Well, I'm going to need my multimeter for that. So let's zoom back in again. Get 
the old multimeter. Here we are. Right, so I want to put this one on ground, so I'll just touch it to that part. And then I'm going to measure, and you can't see that, can you? I'll put that up there. Hopefully you can see that now. I'm going to measure the supply voltage coming in. I'm in AC mode. I want to be in DC mode. So I'm getting 8.2 volts from my 9 volt battery. So it's an old depleted 9 volt battery, but it'll do to run this test. You might have up to 9.2 or 3 volts if it's a brand new battery. Now, the second thing I want to check is whether the voltage is getting from up here, through here and into the positive pin of my op amp. So I'm going to put this on pin 7. I'm getting the same voltage and that's good. Okay, so I am getting the supply voltage into my op amp, it's getting the correct voltage. So what next? Is the bias voltage correct? So let's repeat this exercise, only this time we'll look at the bias voltage. So again, reference to ground. Now our bias voltage, you remember, is between these two M2 resistors or on pin 3. So I'll come in like that place it on pin 3 and I'm getting 3.62 volts. Now I'm actually going to turn my amplifier off when I'm doing this, not that it'll affect it, uh, but you'll hear the interference that it's picking up. So let me do that again with the amplifier off. 3.62 volts which is about half 8.2 volts. So that's correct. Okay. Zoom back out again. Is there voltage on the output? Now, if you remember, we're biasing our signal, in my case, to around 3.6 volts, but in your case, it might be more like 4.5 volts. And our signal will swing around that. So you imagine we've got 0 volts down here, 4.5 volts up here, 9 volts up here. It allows our signal to swing up and down between those two points. If we didn't do that, it wouldn't have anywhere to go when it reached naught volts and it would clip off the bottom of the signal. And we don't want to do that. So what this means is we've biased it and you'll sometimes hear this called a virtual ground, although I'm always reticent to say that in a beginner's video because it makes you think you should be connecting it to ground and you shouldn't at all. 4.5 volts is our bias point. Because of that, it should be detectable on the output of the circuit. So let's zoom back in again. I'll just move this down here a little bit and put this back in shot. So output pin is six, which is this one. So that's what I'd expect just under, well actually about 0.2 of a volt under what's going into it. And that is our midpoint for our AC signal to swing around. So if you're not getting any voltage on the output, then you might want to double check your wiring. You also might have fried the op amp, so it might be worth looking at that. And that's going to lead me on to the next two points. Let's see my guy again. Are all the resistor values correct? So we can go around and check these. We've already looked at these, two, two and five zeros. That's 2,200,000, so that's right. It's 2.2 mega ohms or 2.2 million ohms. Here we've got brown, black, one zero, and yellow, four zeros. So that's 100,000 or 100 kilo ohms. And this one is two, two, four zeros or red, red, yellow. So that's 220,000 ohms or 220 kilo ohms. So that's correct. So now we want to move on to the capacitors. Are these values correct? Now these, the input capacitor is non-polarized and I believe it was either 100 or 10 nanohires. I think it was 100, so it should say 104 on it. I'm going to leave it in there. I'm just going to have a look to the site. Yes, it says 104. And then on these capacitors, it actually says in writing on the side, 10 microfarads for each of them. So I know that's correct, but these capacitors here 
electrolytic. So they're polarized. So you'll see they've got a stripe on them, which says minus. So this should point to the more negative part of your circuit. So here, this one's going to ground. So it's obvious which is the most negative part is this side. This one is feeding the output. So it's actually coming from the output of our op amp and going to our actual jack. Now we know, because we just measured it, that we've got 4.04 in my case volts on the output, maybe more in your case. So that is likely to be the most positive part of the signal. So we want to point it at the output and then the minus goes into our jack cable here, the yellow one. So I've checked that. So hopefully anything now has been corrected and it will be working. However, if it's still not working, just go through and methodically check where you've got everything plugged in. Let's have a look at this circuit. There's nothing on pin one, it's not connected. Pin two is feeding from, let's follow this yellow wire, jumps across to this red wire, and it goes through the 220 kilo ohm resistor from pin six. So I know that pin six goes through a 220 ohm, a 220 kilo ohm resistor, cross there, down that yellow wire, and into pin two. And that's correct. Pin three, has our bias voltage on it, so it's connected from VCC to pin three via this 2.2 mega ohm resistor. And then this other 2.2 mega ohm resistor goes from pin three to ground because we're dividing the voltage and providing a reference of our bias point. Also, my signal's coming in here via this capacitor, so it's going through this capacitor and in there. So I know that pin three has the op amp connector two resistors and a capacitor connected to it. Now I'm just going to check this row that I've got my input signal is only connected to that capacitor and there's nothing else in that row. Good, there isn't. Pin fours are ground, so that's connected via this blue wire straight to ground. And then that's jumped over to here, so we've got ground available on this side as well. So let's jump over here to pin five. Pin five is not connected to anything. So if you've got any connections on pin five, you might want to check the circuit. Pin six is our output. And as we already saw just now, it's connected to pin two via this 220 kilo ohm resistor, but it's also connected to this capacitor. And then this capacitor is going from pin six to our tip of our jack socket here. Now, if we continue looking at this, we will see that we've also got from the other end of this resistor, it doesn't just go across to pin two, it also then goes through this 100 kilo ohm resistor. Now, that 100 kilo ohm resistor then connects to this capacitor here, and this capacitor goes to ground. So that's probably the most tricky bit of this circuit here taking this end of the resistor and not this end of the resistor. So the end of this resistor should only be connected to pin two and that other resistor and nothing else. And then the other end of the 100K resistor is connected to this capacitor and connected to ground. And I'm sorry you can't see those connections very well there because they are underneath those capacitors. So that's what methodically checking all your connections requires to go through methodically one pin at a time and just just check you've got the correct connections on it. Now if you've done all that hopefully you've spotted any mistakes and now it works. If you've got all the right values all the right capacitors you're absolutely sure your wiring all works your grounds are all connected and it still doesn't work chances are you fried your op amp at some point. Your op amp will look like this. And if you fried your op amp, it might not work at all. And in which case, the only thing you can do, if you're absolutely sure everything else is correct, is to put another op amp in here and try a different op amp and see if that makes it work. If it magically works, it means you fried the first op amp. And we can build a little um, 
op amp circuits that flash LEDs and things just to check if these things are working, but we'll do that in a future video. So once you've done all that, hopefully it will now work and you should be able to pass signal. Now again, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn on my amplifier. That is on and turned up. That is how quiet it should be under normal operation. So now I'm going to turn on some white noise and it will amplify it. And I'll turn it off. And then what I'll do is I'll just connect. So it's picking up interference with my finger. I'll use a spare row up here and I'll just connect these two connections together. So these are just connected together now. I'll turn it on. So that's a volume with no amplification. And then I'll move this back to there. Ideally, I'd want to unplug it while I was doing this. It's actually bad practice, but never mind. And then I'll turn this back on. So hopefully you can hear that's amplifying the signal. Just a quick addition to that original troubleshooting video. Um, it occurred to me that when I first started, I wasn't necessarily familiar with different packages having different pinouts because they contain different things. So in the original video, I used a 741 and that's indeed what I've got in this circuit here. It's a 741 chip right there. But I said a better thing to use for audio is an 071. And if you look at the data sheet by going to Google and typing in 741 op amp data sheet and TL071 op amp data sheet, you'll see that the pinouts are exactly the same and you'll get a much neater drawing than I've been able to quickly scribble here. So these are equivalent and you can just swap them out basically. So you can swap out the uh, 741 in my circuit that I built for this one and it will still work. However, some packages like the TL072, the two denotes that it's got two op amps in it. And you'll see that some of the pins are the same. So two and three are the same, but you'll see because there's two op amps, the output of this op amp now goes out of pin one. And then these pins are completely different on this side with the positive supply rail actually being on pin eight now, pin seven having the output, and then the bottom two, five and six being the non-inverting and the inverting input of this op amp. So check your data sheet for the particular op amp you're using as well and whether it's suitable for the circuit. Most of them will be 741s or if you've got them from an audio supplier, probably an 071. But there are many, many different ones out there all with different specifications. Anyway, I hope that's useful, that troubleshooting video, and it helps you to get your initial experiments and circuits to work. If you like my content, please like and subscribe and check out the other electronics videos on this channel. And if you haven't seen the original op amp video, this um, came from that one. So it's worth going back and checking out that one so you can see the schematic and see what I've been on about throughout this video. Anyway, happy experimenting. I'm Stu from Music Technology and I'll catch you again soon.